Hello listeners and welcome to Daily Current Affairs Updates 2nd October 2022. This is your RJ Priyanka and without any further delay I take you to our first daily update which belongs to the category of important day. Gandhi Jayanti 2nd October The 153rd birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi who taught Indians the value of truth and non-violence during the freedom movement will be celebrated on October 2nd 2022 His ideals also enabled other countries in Asia and Africa where Mahatma Gandhi spent much of his life to achieve independence from colonial rule without bloodshed In his pursuit of non-cooperation Mahatma Gandhi was imprisoned several times His strategy of peaceful resistance and mass civil disobedience was later adopted by people all over the world. Now let's move forward to our second daily update which belongs to the category of important day. International Day of Nonviolence, 2nd October. On October 2nd, the United Nations observes the International Day of Nonviolence which commemorates the birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi, a leader of India's freedom movement and a pioneer of the philosophy of nonviolence. The goal of the day is to raise awareness about the concept of nonviolence through education. The first commemoration of the day occurred in 2007. According to a resolution passed by the United Nations General Assembly the day is an opportunity to disseminate the message of nonviolence including through education and public awareness Now let's move forward to our third daily update which belongs to the category of books Madam Sir Bihar's first lady IPS officer Manjari Jaruhar launched her book Manjari Jaruhar Bihar's first female IPS officer launched her book Madam Sir in Mumbai. She discusses her experiences and challenges as a police officer over the last 3 decades. Penguin Random House India PRHI is the publisher of the autobiography. Jaruhar one of India's first five female police officers and the first from Bihar joined the IPS in 1976 and has worked for the state governments of Bihar and Jharkhand the National Police Academy NPA the Central Industrial Security Force CISF and the Central Reserve Police Force CRPF Now let's move forward to our fourth daily update which belongs to the category of obituaries. Malayalam director Ashokan passes away at 60 in Kochi. Ashokan a well-known Malayalam film director whose real name was Raman Ashok Kumar died in Kochi at the age of 60. His death was confirmed by the Film Employees Federation of Kerala Directors Union. He became ill and traveled from Singapore to Kochi for treatment. Varnam Ashokan's directorial debut was released in 1989. In 1990 he directed the psychological thriller Sandaram It was followed in 1991 by Moolika Rajyathu and in 1993 by Acharyan. He was the managing director of Oberon, a Gulf and Kochi based IT firm. Now let's move forward to our fifth daily update which belongs to the category of agreement. ESSCI partnered with Samsung India to train Indian youth. The Electronic Sector Skill Council of India ESSCI has signed a memorandum of understanding with Samsung India to provide youth with industry relevant skills in emerging technology domains in order to improve their employability. It will be included in the government's Skill India initiative. The Samsung Innovation Campus program aims to train over 3000 unemployed youth aged 18 to 25 in future technologies such as artificial intelligence, the internet of things, big data and coding and programming. Now let's move forward to our sixth daily update which belongs to the category of international. ICC announced Oval and Lords to host World Test Championship finals. The International Cricket Council ICC has confirmed that the ICC World Test Championship WTC final 2023 will be held at the Oval in London with Lords hosting the 2025 edition. 
Geoff Allardyce, chief executive officer of the ICC, expressed his delight at the confirmation of two iconic venues for the next two cycles. The dates for the ICC World Test Championship finals in 2023 and 2025 will be announced in the due course. During the ICC annual general meeting in Birmingham in July, England was selected to host the next two WTC finals. Now let's move forward to our seventh daily update which belongs to the category of banking. RBI cancelled license of Maharashtra based Lakshmi Cooperative Bank. The Reserve Bank of India RBI has revoked the Lakshmi Cooperative Bank Limited's license in Solapur Maharashtra citing insufficient capital and earning prospects as a result the bank has been barred from engaging in the banking business which includes among other things the acceptance and repayment of deposits According to the bank's data approximately 99% of depositors are entitled to receive the full amount of their deposits from the deposit insurance and credit guarantee corporation DICGC Now let's move forward to our eighth daily update which belongs to the category of banking Yuko Bank becomes the first lender to get RBI's approval for rupee trade Yuko Bank a public sector lender has received Reserve Bank of India's RBI approval to open a special Vostro account with Gazprom Bank of Russia for trade settlement in Indian rupees following the RBI's decision in July to allow Indian banks to settle trade in Indian currency the Kolkata based lender is the first to receive regulator approval the Russian lender was established in 1990 set up by the world's largest gas producer and exporter Gazprom to provide banking services to gas industry enterprises Now let's move forward to our ninth daily update which belongs to the category of banking. TerraPay partnered with NPCI to enable cross border transactions through UPI. TerraPay, a leading global payments infrastructure group, has announced a strategic partnership with NPCI International Payments Limited (NIPL), the international arm of National Payments Corporation of India (NPCI), to further strengthen its cross-border payment solutions. This collaboration with NIPL will enable Indian customers and merchants in India who have an active unified payments interface ID UPI ID to seamlessly make and accept cross border payments by leveraging TerraPay's agile infrastructure and the UPI network. Now let's move forward to our 10th and last daily update for today which belongs to the category of summits and conferences. Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar inaugurated Lok Manthan program. Debates and discussions are the soul of good governance and free ideas must flow for social harmony said Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar at the launch of the third Lok Manthan program in Guwahati. In a speech to a group Mr Dhankar stated that intolerance of the opposing viewpoint is all too common in today's world. Freedom of expression is non-negotiable and members of civil society bear a greater responsibility to protect the views of the marginalized. So with this daily update we have now come to an end of today's episode of Daily Current Affairs Updates 2nd October 2022. Please stay tuned for more learning. This is your RJ Priyanka signing off for the day. Thank you.